alternative to a roast turkey and that is turkey and cranberry meatloaf but of course you can eat this any time of the year whenever you feel like those holiday flavors this is a fantastic dish for you to make the first thing we're going to do and i'll chat to you when i'm chopping the first thing we're going to do is we are going to get our veggies which is in this case is leeks and celery and my leeks have started to unravel <laughs> but we are going to chop these really finely and we are going to saute them just for a little bit so i am gonna chop them into my bowl and then we're going to give them a spin around the skillet so since this is being made into a meatloaf and your veggies are all going to be hidden inside your meatloaf there are no prizes for having pretty vegetables. Oops. There are also no prizes for chopping fast. Chopping, being able to chop 300 pounds of onions in under 30 seconds I promise you does not make your onions taste any better or your leeks or anything else you might need to chop. So being able to chop faster not only does it not make you a better cook, it makes you a faster one, nor does it make anything taste better. It all just tastes the same whatever speed you chop at. My recommendation is that you concentrate on not chopping off your digits. Now, you'll see that in the recipe it says finely chopped. And so that's what we're doing here. And of course, if you really don't get off on chopping things you can also whiz the the leeks and celery through a food processor if that's a thing for you you will notice that the recipe says finely chopped and you'll notice that I'm, that's what I'm doing. I'm making these, these leeks pretty fine. And the reason for that is that because this is a meatloaf, most people are not going to want to come across a large lump of anything. A meatloaf is kind of one of those things where everything is small so it's rather a blend of flavors rather than big lumps of something halfway through the other thing of course when you're chopping things like this although we don't need it to look pretty because it's going to be inside the meatloaf the goal or one of the goals is to get the pieces of a similar size because then they will all cook evenly. I have some rambunctious leek pieces here. Okay, we're almost done on the leeks. We can get them going. 
and then we'll get our celery. Now this recipe is meatloaf is not a huge thing in England, but it is a really big thing here in the US. So meatloaf was not high up my list of things to do when I first started creating recipes for keto and low carb. However, I quickly learned that meatloaf was a really big thing here and that y'all would appreciate some recipes for meatloaf that did not involve breadcrumbs. Now, the other thing I learned from folks was that you all would appreciate meatloaf recipes that were not dry. There seems to be a, a common complaint of dry meatloafs abounding on the internet. So let me just assure you that this is not one of those. Very moist, not dry at all. Okay, so I've got my leeks done. First, I'm going to drop my spatula on the floor. Ten second rule. Going to give it a wipe off. So I'm going to My oil was already heating while I was chopping those, so we're going to put that in there and we're going to put that in there. Give it a stir around. And remember, you can always put your leeks and celery through a food processor if you would like to. So I'm going to get the leeks going there and I'm going to move on to my celery, which also needs to be finely chopped. Not only does this meatloaf, I've never actually seen another recipe for a turkey meatloaf, but I love turkey and I think that turkey is very underrated. And also ground turkey is usually, you can normally find ground turkey cheap at the grocery store and I'm all about making our keto budgets go further. So this is a great budget friendly meal. The other fabulous thing about this other than it being budget friendly and moist and something different from your normal beef based meatloaf is that it is fantastic hot you can make it you can bake it you can eat it it is also fantastic cold and because it's fantastic cold that means that it is also a terrific thing to take on the road be that popping a couple of slices in your lunch sack or lunch box to take to the office or to send to school with the kids or whatever you do. You can heat it up in a microwave or you can just take it and eat it 
cold it is fantastic also travels very well so super good super nutritious protein packed road trip food as well so very very portable it holds together brilliantly it slices like a dream so this recipe is super useful super versatile if you you can always use it also use it as a as a like a batch recipe so make up the meatloaf bake it portion it if there's only you know a couple of you slice it up eat two slices now and then portion uh, in slices and freeze and so you have a virtually instant dinner protein or, or protein available in the freezer in the morning before you leave you can just get a slice or two out of the freezer and then pair it with a side if, if you do sides or just have a couple of slices of meatloaf and again once it's defrosted hot or cold it is fabulous either way this would be great if roasting a whole turkey is is not for you for whatever reason because you, you live somewhere hot and you just don't want to have the oven on or you know whatever it is this would be a great alternative it has a cranberry flavor baked right in you can make it ahead of time and have a lovely stress-free thanksgiving or christmas or whatever holiday you would normally roast a turkey for almost done with the celery i keep wanting to call it cauliflower Again with the celery finely chopped, use a food processor or one of those mandolin slicer things if that's what you prefer. It doesn't have to be pretty, it just has to be chopped small. And just for good measure, I'm going to do a rough chop. Chop any of those big bits down. Now I'm going to add. those like that give it a good stir that normally, it normally takes about 15 minutes for the the leeks and the celery to soften so i am going to leave this to to saute until all the the moisture has cooked out and our veggies are nice and soft meanwhile i am going to get the rest of our ingredients ready uh, so in my bowl here i'm going to put my dried cranberries now if you cannot get 
unsweetened dried cranberries. They are, they are more common now than they ever were. And you can also get the big band, uh, brands like Craisins, you can actually get very much reduced sugar. So if you can't get sugar-free dried cranberries, you could either dry your own, or if that's not a thing for you, get the lowest sugar cranberries that you can. And most grocery stores I've seen have the, the low added sugar version. So do the best you can with the cranberries. There's not a ton of them. And when you spread them throughout the entire meatloaf, you don't need to worry about the carb count, but do get the lowest sweeten you can. Now these cranberries that I have are a little bit big. So if yours are two, I would suggest, suggest just chopping them down a little bit. Now, they are sticky, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my bowl and I'm going to put my almond meal in it. Now, that's going to help as I chop. This isn't an exact science. I just want there to be more little bits of pops of cranberry rather than fewer large pops. So you do you. If you prefer to have the cranberries chunkier, that's fine. Or if your cranberries are already smaller, that's fine too. So now I'm going to add my cranberries to my almond meal. It's the end of my knife. I'm going to give my veggies a quick stir here, keep them moving, make sure that those leeks aren't caramelizing and sticking to the bottom of the pan. Give all the pieces a chance to get in the heat. I'm going to keep those going there. And then I'm going to add the rest of the ingredients to here. So I've got my sage. I have got my salt, I have got hair there, no hair is required, a good bunch of ground black pepper, and my zinc. Xanthan gum. Before I add my xanthan, I'm going to toss the cranberries in the almond meal so that the xanthan doesn't just all get stuck to the cranberries. So I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to sprinkle in my xanthan and mix it all together really well. Okay, so that's ready. Now, let's give the veggies a stir. I'm also gonna give my hands a quick rinse. If you're baking your meatloaf straight away, then now would be a great time to pop the oven on and you want it at 350F. And I'm just gonna rinse my hands. And while the veggies are finishing off, I'm going to prepare my meatloaf pan, my meatloaf pan. Now, 
I like to uh, use oil. You can use a spray. You can spray it if you like. But if a spray is not a thing for you, just pour a little bit of oil in the bottom. Get a brush. This is a pastry brush. I keep one that all I use it for is oil. So this is my oil brush. Miss Scapey's there. And then we're just going to use our brush to generously coat all the surfaces of our meatloaf, meatloaf pan. Loaf pan. I'm struggling to remember what things are called today. Loaf pan. This will just make clean up easier. It'll also make it easier for your meatloaf to come out. So our pin is ready. Our veggies are almost ready. We'll just give that a couple more minutes. And when we come back, we'll get this meatloaf finished off. So our leeks and our celery are nice and soft. There's, there isn't a bunch of water floating around in there. The moisture's mostly gone. So I am gonna take those off. I'm gonna bring back my bowl of dry ingredients and I am going to add them into the mixing bowl with the dry ingredients. A good stir, and it does say a large mixing bowl, and it really does mean a large <laughs> mixing bowl, because I am struggling to get this mixed without making a mess. So. I am going to sprint over and get my super big mixing bowl out. Please hold. since I since I last made this I typically don't very often make recipes twice once I've made them and they're out in the world I'm so excited to get on and make the next thing that I typically don't really make them and I had forgotten quite what it meant <laughs> when it said large bowl so grab the largest mixing bowl you've got add your veggies mix thoroughly with your dry ingredients and boy howdy this already smells fantastic i can smell the sage it's delicious okay all right so that as you can see is well mixed so now what we're going to do is we are going to add our ground turkey and we're also going to add some 
egg white. So I've got my egg here. If you buy uh, egg whites and cartons, feel totally free to use that. You can also, um, depending on where you are in your journey or what your goals are, etc., etc., all of those fabulous things that make you the wonderful individual that you are, if you want to use whole egg, you totally can. The only reason that I used just egg white was so that it was just the protein that we were adding we weren't adding any more fat there uh, there's obviously a significant amount of fat in all of those almonds the almond meal that we added There's some fat in the meat, although not a ton. And then, of course, there's some, the, the fat we use to saute the veggies. So you do you. If you want to use a whole egg, there's no secret cooking reason why you shouldn't use a whole egg. This does take a little, this can be your work, half a workout, but it does take a minute to get that meat really well combined with all of the other things. So if you're, if you've had a hard week or someone upset you and you wanna get a bit of aggression out, this is a great recipe to do that. Okay. I think that's about as mixed as we're going to get it. So now we just need to get our, our tin. And we need to start. You do want to, this isn't going to flow. So you do want to take a minute to push it down, push it uh, down into the corners, push it along all the sides, because as I say, this isn't going to flow anywhere. So you need to help it be in the right place. So we're going to push that down and then we're going to keep adding our meat, pushing it down. This smells so good even though it's raw. Pushing it down. This way you're gonna have a perfectly shaped meatloaf when it comes out. Pushing it down so we got no gaps. Get all that air out. And this is the point where I'm beginning to wonder if one of my loaf pans didn't get lost in the move because well. <laughs> When I made this the first time, it filled my loaf pan perfectly, and yet here I am with more meat loaf than loaf pan. So now I'm wondering if one of my, if I had a bigger loaf pan that went walkabout. There's, um, I had a 
a house guest at one point and uh, several things <laughs> never saw the light of day again afterwards so so there is our meatloaf and you clearly need a bigger loaf than this one here but as I say I know the first time I made it it filled it up exactly so I must have a missing meatloaf okay so now we have got our meat into our loaf we're going to bake it just like that in the center of our oven for an hour now so this brings me to a good point so we've got our meatloaf and obviously for reasons unknown i have a bunch of mix left over so you can do several things you can put it in muffin cups you can but let me get one of those just pop them in here or you can do what I'm going to do which is I am just going to oil some of these until I have used up my mixture and then these are essentially individual portions instead of being a Meatloaf, there'll be like a turkey cranberry patty. I'm already excited for that. So I'm going to push that in there. Your little ones, your muffin versions. Um, will obviously cook a lot quicker than your big meatloaf so I would start to look at them at probably oh didn't put any oil in that one wrong one um, I would start to look at them at probably about mm, half an hour maybe 20 minutes I'll take a peek I've got enough for one more here. Get that out of the way. And I'm just going to steal a bit here. So I've got five that are an even size. And then... I am just going to, because it will make my life a lot easier later, I'm just going to take a piece of kitchen towel and I'm going to clean off all that excess because all that's going to happen if you put that in the oven like that is you're going to give yourself a half hour of dish scrubbing pan scrubbing so just take a minute to wipe off that excess a minute now doing this will save you 20 minutes and elbow grease and frustration and dish soap. You'll thank me. So there we go. We have five 
little mini individual token cranberry meatloafs and our big cranberry meatloaf they are going to go the big one is going to go into the oven at 350f for an hour um once it's come out of the oven you do want to let it rest in the tin for 10 minutes and then you want to get a knife not a sharp knife because you don't want to damage your pan but a something like a palette knife so something with a round edge like that and you just gently want to slide the knife around all of the edges if you have oiled it well your meatloaf will just fall out so what i recommend you do is put a cooling rack on top and then slice around with a knife put the cooling rack on top and then flip it over and your meatloaf will slide out and uh, you'll be a happy happy cook so enjoy!